California Eye Patrol? Oh, there's a woman walking on the freeway, going into the freeway, just walking barefoot, and it's getting darker, so they might run her over. A lot of the, the homeless camps that you have, I don't know if you've noticed it or not, a lot of homeless migrate towards the freeways that are under the overcrossings. They're very close. They close. They, they close by. It's a good. It's a safe haven for them. They're, they uh, they set up their camps. And Caltrans is constantly out there dealing with homeless communities and camps that find their ways towards the towards the freeways. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we are dealing with that, uh, and we're also in, in, in panhandlers. You know, a lot of the a lot of the homeless end up being a panhandler in size, so they find their way to freeway off ramps, they find their way to intersections and traffic lights, trying to uh, get a helping hand, uh, so to speak. So we deal with that issue a lot. Also with the mentally ill, a lot of them are mobile. A lot of them do drive. They do drive in cars, and where we have a very distinct disadvantage is that uh, we see a violation, we turn on a red light, and someone pulls over. And that's all we know. And uh, so you don't know if they're part of the 7% that have issues. Uh, you don't know if they're just having a bad day. You don't know if they're career criminal or they're just nice people who just got pulled over. So we're constantly uh, trying to train and, and, and teach our officers how to deal with this full range of, of uh, issues that you have. No one size fits all, knowing that you could get any of the above, all of the above, or none of the above in any of those stops. And that's the changing role that currently happens out there. Um, and uh, it makes our job, it makes the job for those officers extremely dangerous because of the unpredictableness of, of what occurs. And one of the things that my top management were talking about is how do you instill the learning domains out of this 40 hour class and put it into the academy? And I can do that. That's relatively easy. But that only captures people we hire today and into the future. I still have 7,000 officers who are working the road that I want to incorporate that into. So the, the catch-up mechanism is really the greater question, is how do I do that? And uh, they're, they're required to have 24 hours of ongoing training every single year, which we provide them. The 24 hours can be anything that is post-certified. And so that could be shooting, pursuit driving, laws of arrest, court testimony, whatever it may be, but one of the things I'm going to make sure is out of that 24 hours at a minimum will be how you handle mental illness. But I can also increase that. I can, I can train them for 30 or 40 hours if I want. The bad news is if I'm training somebody for 40 hours, they're not working on the road. They're not out there helping people. They're not doing their, that, that aspect. So there's a give and take on how I go about that. But I think the training, I think the, 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 the subject matter is so important. Um, it may be worth that. Now, maybe not the whole 40 hours, because I can't get it all done in one year, but I think it's a continuous evolution of training that has to just continue. The dialogue has to keep going. That's my plan.